the last time I went to Iran, I think three years ago, I went back home to Iran and I, I went to a far village in Iran. I realized that if any village, they don't have a school, the girls, they don't go to a school. The boys can walk to another village and go to a school, but the girls cannot. So parents, they don't know what to do with these kids. You know, it's a little girl, if they let them go walk with the boys through the hill and mountain to go to the next village, you know, maybe they get uh, sexually assaulted. You know, still in Iran, you have to be virgin before you're married. So they, were, they are so worried for that and they are so poor. So what they do, normally they are in the age of nine or 10, they give them to the husband. They make these kids to marry it. Married with a man 15 years old, 20, 25, God knows. I realized that if I make, and I, I talk to parents, and say, if you have a school in your village, are you going to let your daughter go to a school? They say, of course we're going to do it. So always remember, when you make one girl go to a school, you are helping a community. Because this girl, she become a mother, and she's going to raise kids, and then she teach them well. They live in a very, very poor uh, um, condition. Very poor condition they live. And uh, my heart break when I saw that. I saw the girls that are living in one room and three floor beds, and all day they are in a prison because the boys are outside. So they're all sitting in a room from morning to night. They cannot move out. And then the bed and mattress in the blanket are so old and is not warm in the cold area. They don't have rug. They don't have carpet on the floor. It's dirt. Most of the room is dirt. It is a horrible condition. So one of the teachers said to me that, uh, Mrs. Donadust, we have these kids, they trap here, and they stink. If you buy a wash and dryer for us, I wash their clothing at least. So. Uh, my husband and I, we sent money for the organization to buy three wash and dryer and uh, put it on different schools. So three of the schools, they have wash and dryer. But, uh, and I said, okay, I want to help kids. When I know they are in poverty, you know, I can buy rock, you know, that any rock, anything that they can play, they sit and play in it, or they can do, they pray or, um, you know, a, a nice soft blanket, a warm blanket. I'm not going for fancy or luxurious things, but something warm that in those cold winter, if I can put some money in a school that they can buy a nice warm boot for them to walk on the snow. You know, my American friend, they said, why don't you make cooking class for us? You know, we love to learn how to cook Persian. I said, that's a good idea. This is food for thought. And this little baby name is... Uh, uh, Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, Hunter. Hunter's mom was one of Peru's patients, my husband's patient, and uh, a born in, in Australia. Fist and June, which is... Uh, consists of pomegranates and walnuts. That's all, you know, nothing more in it, but it's a very ancient food. We are cooking this food for at least 5,000 years. So ladies, they take the, a piece of a stone and another stone and ground it like that. For, day, for maybe one or two days, a couple of ladies, they were sitting, and then they put it in the pot with a pomegranate juice. They make the juice and the pomegranate juice with cook them normally one full day. Where am I? My juice again. The whole juice. Yeah. Perfect. It really makes it like liquid. This is very good. And then, you don't put any oil, you don't Put it on a low flame. It's kind of like a pinkish color because of the pomegranate juice. Guys, in. Four 
our friend that do our vegetarian. Really Iranian, so I get the prune that I get from Iran. It's more um, sour, sour and sweet. These are our sweet. So the, the lengthy time of making this food among so many other Persian food when you are making it is it takes so much time, right? So during this time, people they put lots of love. You have to. If you don't love to do it, you won't do it. No fat or anything. I, I'm, and it cooks very fast. So I'm making this one. A little bit pepper. The cinnamon makes it so tasty. It's a beautiful flavor. Good amount of cinnamon. Yes. Cinnamon is very good. These two guys are doing great. So we don't do anything with this. We're coming to our soup. Lentil, when you soak it before, ahead of time, it gets soft and it cooks like that. So I want to try and see how it is. Now, a little bit more. It like it for the lead. <laughs> I didn't put very much oil, so maybe the tadik is not so crispy. I think it's crispy. Okay. Looks like rice cake. So, enjoy it. So, it's the beginning of it.